Okay, so welcome to another video of the Golang. This video is going to be a little bit longer as we are going to have a detailed discussion on this subject, which is mod. So from the very start of this series, we have been writing this command, which is go mod init, and then we give it some name, and then we just move on. We never talk more about this. This is the time where we talk more about this. Now, eventually, we are going to move into the phase where we are going to build the backend, which is the next few videos that we are going to be doing. Before we go there, just keep in mind that if you'll be building something as a backend, eventually it will go in the production. And if you're working in some big organization who is using Golang, something like Dropbox or Google, you should really need to know in depth about the Go mod, which is a tooling. Now, Go gives you a lot of stuff which are known as tooling, and these are basically tools which you can use for a variety of reasons. Go build is one of such tool which build your application to be ready for production. Go run is also a tool which helps you to run it at a low cost uh, compared to the build. So similar to that, Go mod is also another tool which helps you to do um, a lot of stuff which we are going to discuss in this video. I have got my whole lot of notes ready for this one because this is going to be a long one. Of course, still we cannot cover whole entirety of it, but it is going to give you a big idea about uh, what it is, how it can be utilized, and a whole bunch of other things. So get ready with that. Now, it's not like we're gonna just talk about theory because I need to show you the implementation of that as well and what it's actually doing, so it's not just presentation. I will walk you through along with me, so go ahead and work with me here. Let's go ahead and work on to the 23rd, quite far, and let's call this one as my module. So eventually we'll be talking about modules as well and stuff like that. Now, whenever we go ahead and do this, uh, you are pretty aware of it that we create a new file into it, which is main.go, and we will come on to this file eventually. But right now, if I just want to go ahead and open this file, let's open this up into integrated terminal. Uh, this is nice and easy. We can go ahead and work with that. Let me just minimize this one. And I say, hey, I'm going to say that this is a package main. And I'm going to create a function which just says, hey, I'm main. And inside this function, we are going to have a simple font which says, uh, hello mod from, not from, hello mod in Golang. So that is what we're going to say. Now, can I run this file? Yes, you can run this file. According to the latest standard, you can just go ahead and say go run main.go and it is absolutely fine. But I told you this is not a good way of having to work through with that. So let's go ahead and say that I'm gonna say go mod init, which initialize the package. And if you remember from the earlier days, I told you that although we write some stuff like loops and all of that, this is not a correct way of handling the things. I earlier told you that usually that's going to be GitHub name or any hosting where you're going to put all of the code. And then obviously your username, in my case, this is a little bit longer one. And then I'm gonna call this one as my modules or whatever the name you want to go with that. So if I go ahead and hit enter, it says, hey, uh, to add the module requirement and sums, use go mod tidy. Don't worry, we'll talk all about this one in this one. If I open this up go mod file, it says, hey, your module name is github.com slash hiteshwadri slash my modules, and the go version is 1.17. So we can deduce this, that the number one job of this go mod file is to initialize it, and as soon as you initialize it, it gives the idea of some third party or somebody who's, who will be running your code, that this entire code was dependent on which version of Golang. In my case, it is 1.17, but it can be 1.16, or maybe low, lower version, or maybe upper version. But again, remember, it says 1.17, so we are on a pretty stable version going up here, but there are some times you want to work with the edge cases. So we need to understand that what kind of number system they are following. They are following a SEMver version, so in case you want to know a little bit more detail, uh, a while ago I created a video about uh, NPM, why, what, and how, so you can go ahead and watch this one. I know you are more over into Golang, but this video, not just talk about NPM, but a little bit about the semantic versioning as well. So it says you always starts with 1.10, and this exact versioning is followed by Golang also. We can do the patch release on the third digit, which is 1.0.1, and if it is a minor release, we can do on the second digit, which is 1.10, and if it is a major release, which is 2.0. In case you don't want to watch that, that's fine. You can go ahead and read it on to semver.org, 
This is the organization uh, which keeps uh, keep all the track of the versioning and gives you the standard that you have to follow. So major, minor and patch, the increment and all of that. So they give you all the details about that. So you can go ahead and read that or you can go ahead and watch that. Now Go was not always like this. It was not always like the modules and all of that. It was way different uh, in the starting days. And also you will notice eventually that now we don't have too much of the files going on in here. In a minute, we are going to bring in some dependencies from the online as well. And even though do those dependencies come in, they are not being shown in your working folder. They are placed somewhere else, which we are going to see together. But the big idea of moving from workspaces into the modules happened somewhere around 2019 in the Golang, fairly recently. And you can read about all of this into this go.dev blog where they show that uh, using the modules, they also teach you how to create the modules. But uh, the whole idea is that now we are moving into the Go modules and we are releasing out a tooling which is Go Mod, which will help you to understand a whole bunch of other things. So although they talk about creating a new modules and dependency injection and all of that, but here's an important line that I would like to bring your attention that uh, here it says Go 1.10 and 1.2 includes uh, support for modules, Go's new dependency management system. So during 2019, they said uh, enough of the workspace, this is not cutting it out and eventually a lot of people who were using Go in their own uh, freelancing projects and stuff, they said, hey, uh, we can also contribute in that. So a lot of people came in, gave a lot of good feedback, and they said, hey, this module system is the way to go for forward into this. So thus, Go actually included this uh, whole Go mod file and all of that. Now, uh, this is what the Go mod file is, and this is a whole bunch of other things that you can read, including all the lexical elements, Go mod tidy, vendor, verify, there's a lot. Obviously, I cannot create a, a video which includes all of this, but I'll give you enough of idea so that if you need anything, you will be having the knowledge to figure it out via the documentation. Okay, now moving on, we need to understand a little bit more of it, but in order to uh, work with that, we need something uh, which we can use in the future as well. So we will be using a routing system, uh, which is Gorilla Mux, really, really famous in the Golang world. And we need to work with that. Eventually, we'll be working on that. But as of now, I'm more interested in the installation and the bare minimum one route of that. So it says, if you want to install this, you can use the Go, Go toolchain to work with that. And Go toolchain is the way how you pull in all the dependencies. So it says, go get, and then you say github.com gorilla mux. Now, most important thing, if you use this go get, it will go on to the web and will bring in all the assets from the web itself. So this repository will be directly fetched. This is really important because in the production, sometimes there are some servers on which your application is hosted and they are not allowed to consume uh, things via internet. So make sure you have an idea of that. Let's go ahead and copy this. And now something interesting is gonna come in. So we have seen this much already. I hope you are aware of it. Now let's go ahead and work on with that. Now, inside the same module folder, I want to use and run this command, which says go get dash u, github.com slash gorilla mux. I go ahead and hit enter on that. It's going to go ahead and download this one here. Now, a couple of interesting thing happened just right here. It said that, hey, I'm using a version 1.8.0. So we already talked about the versioning, how it goes on. Uh, that is nice, we understand that. It says, now the require is there, and it says github.com, uh, Gorilla Mux. So this is the library that's coming in. And the version that is coming in is version 1.8.0. So very specifically, version is coming up. And it also says indirect here. This indirect means that as of now, your code in the main.go file or any other file is not using this. As soon as you start using it, this indirect will go away. So this is what it means. Okay, not only that, it has also given us this go sum file. Now what this go sum file does, if you remember, if you follow up my channel, uh, there are a lot of attacks that happen. One of the recent big attack in USA uh, was kind of a man in the middle attack where there was an update which was supposed to go in the Solaris and somebody just injected their malicious code in that update and everybody just did that uh, malicious update. In order to avoid these kinds of things, because you are pulling up a lot of things from the GitHub repository, it does a check on that. So at the time of writing this code, I said that, hey, I'm pulling up this repository, which is having a hash of this one. If anything changes in that repository in this special version, then the hash is going to fail. And that all is done in the go sum. And yes, there are ways to verify these sums and check and all of that. Uh, that is done via the go mod all of that. 
Okay, interestingly, you can see that in this folder, right now, I don't have these files. They, these files are there, but I'm not able to see that. Now, let me show you that how it actually works. So let me bring this up a little bit above. Now, let's go ahead and run go env, which is another set of tooling to work with that. Now, it says, hey, uh, I have all these variables going up here, and there are some interesting one. Let me show you that. So there is this one go path, which is slash user slash go slash LCO slash go. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal. There we go. And I want to migrate to this directory. So if you are on Windows, go ahead and migrate on this directory. If I go ahead and do an LS, uh, my bad, LS, there we go. I see bin and package. Further, we need to drill down into the package. And inside that, we need to go into the mod. Again, really, we are talking too much in detail about the mod. So if I go ahead and I see this cache, now this is where all of the libraries or the packages that you are bringing up from the internet, this is the place where they go in, not in your working directory. And whenever next time you request them, they are not being fetched from the web, they are being fetched from a local copy. So if I go ahead into this cache, I go ahead and do a quick ls, there is a download, and inside the download, you can see there is a lot going on in here. The one that we are looking up is inside the GitHub because obviously we are fetching it from GitHub. If I do an LS, you can see that there is a gorilla up here and this gorilla obviously will have the gorilla mux. So let's go ahead and say that this one is, my bad, CD gorilla mux. So if I do an LS, all the mux and WebSocket and all of that are here. So you get the idea that how these are being bring in and all of that works here. Okay, quite a lot of detail that we have talked. Let's go ahead and close this one and mod file as well. Now let's go ahead and work a little bit on defining some of the method. So the first method that I'm going to define is going to be greeter. Uh, it's not gonna do too much. It's going to just do a fumpt and we'll say, uh, hey there mod users, there we go. And we're also going to define another method. So we are going to call this one as uh, serve home this one is going to be a little bit tricky i'm pretty sure you have never seen that it actually gets two parameters a w and a r and the w is actually an http response writer so we need to bring an http package for that we will do that but this one is actually a come on dot and we need to have a response writer and the second one is R, which is a request. And this is not an ordinary variable. This is a type of pointer, again, coming up from HTTP dot request. Now, this is a new syntax. You have seen this for the very first time, but you'll be seeing this a lot while designing the backend. This is a common syntax. Now, what this is going to do, this is not going to do much. Uh, we need to send some response. So the request is somebody is sending us a request. And if you want to use the parameters and URL and all of that, that all is inside the R. But if you want to send some response back, that is done through this W. This is response writer. So we're going to go ahead and say, hey, just go ahead and write a response for me. What do you want to write? And if you remember, everything from the web is coming up from the byte format. So that's what we do. We, go, we are going to go ahead and send a slice of byte. And that is going to say, Let's go ahead and say something in the h1 tag. I'm pretty sure you are aware of this. Not a big deal. Classic HTML, not too fancy. And we're going to go ahead and say, welcome to Golang, Golang series. Come on. On YouTube. Yeah, we are watching it on YouTube. Okay, so now we have two methods uh, that we are using. So that is nice. But again, there is a little bit more. So we have these two functions. We are going to use them a little bit later. First, let's use this greeter. There we go. Greeter is being used. Okay, nice and easy. But this serve home is not being used. Our net package is also coming in. This serve home is actually a method I have designed for this Gorilla Mux. Because if I go ahead and look at the example, the examples are pretty simple. I go ahead and create this variable r, which is coming up from mux.newrouter. And this router can actually handle, uh, has a handle function. It handles it on a route, and then you can go ahead and define a method that what I should do there. So all I have to do is go ahead and copy this, uh, copy these two lines. Go ahead and just print that out. Now again, if I go ahead and save this one, this mux is automatically bringing in this github.com gorilla mux. The reason it was able to do it, because I have already said, go get gorilla mux from the github. Now, instead of this uh, home handler, 
I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, uh, just use the serve home. Remember, we don't want to do something like this, which is automatically being suggested to me, that hey, go ahead and do something like this. No, we want to just pass on a reference of that. That's all what we want to do. Now here we are doing a little bit more that if anything goes on to the slash, just go ahead and work with that. But there is additional option that you can use a dot um, method on this one, methods, and can say I'm only serving the get method. So uh, if you'll read the documentation, you'll get the idea a little bit of that. Okay, uh, there are a couple of, uh, it says could not import GitHub Mux, uh, no module provided uh, packets. So it looks like there are some issues. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll, we'll figure it out, don't worry on that. Now, another thing that is uh, important for us is to run this as a server. Running a server in the Golang is like super, super easy. We can go ahead and say, hey, HTTP, you just go ahead and say dot listen and serve. It takes a couple of parameters. First is on what port you want to listen. I will listen on maybe 4000. And you have to provide the router as well. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, this is my router. So this is all what we are gonna do, but this actual code can actually throw up some error. In the case of web, uh, yes, we can do the classic comma okay syntax, but you're gonna see most of the time, we actually bring in another package, which is log, which has this option of fatal, which automatically if something goes as fail, it just logs that value. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Okay, so a lot of stuff is going on in here and we are receiving some of the errors as well, I know. Uh, let's go ahead and try to build this one. So we're going to go ahead and say, instead of go run, we're gonna go ahead and say, go build. And we're gonna just say dot. So build everything inside this one. And it says, hey, everything is fine. And I'm able to see this go module, which is a new folder. Let's go ahead and try go run and main dot go. So if I run this, it says, hey, uh, mod users and hopefully in theory, we should be able to see something onto the port 4000. Let's go ahead and see that on the localhost if we are running it properly or not. So localhost and 4000. Uh, there we go. Welcome to Golang series on YouTube. Okay, so this is all what we are able to see. Uh, there is still some red squiggly line which is uh, getting says broken import, but don't worry, we will fix that up. Okay, so quite a lot of stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. Now notice here, although we are using this Gorilla Mux, it still says indirect. So what is going on in here? Why is it saying indirect? I'm using it, it should not be saying that. This is exactly why this line appeared at front which says use go mod tidy. Now again, remember the operations, whenever we use go mod, these are expensive operations. So let me go ahead and clean this. So interrupt that and let's run go mod tidy. Now tidy again is an expensive operation. So whenever you do that, I just make sure you keep an eye on that. Now notice here that the indirect line is gone. That means this package is directly being used. Very important command. You'll be running this quite a lot. Okay. So quite a lot of stuff uh, that we have talked about. Now let's go ahead and move on a little bit further. This one is a little bit of a longer video. So let's go ahead and continue further uh, after a little break for me. Okay, so now we know that how we can bring in third-party libraries, can read their documentation, and kind of use them a little bit. It's working fine as of now. Now let's go ahead and work a little bit onto this mod as well. So we saw that this is the mod and this is how we bring up the things, so that is nice. But let's use a little bit more onto this go mod. I told you earlier that we have this go.sum, which gives us these hash sums for that specific version, so that if anything goes maliciously wrong on that repository, we can verify that. So we can go ahead and say uh, go mod and it has a tool of verify of all of that. So as soon as you run this go mod verify, this is going to say all modules are verified. It's going to go ahead and check this mod that how many modules are required. And as soon as you just go ahead and run this go mod verify, it go into the go.sum file, take those hashes which are very unique and just try to verify everything is fine and okay. Now this is great, uh, this is okay. Now let me show you a couple of more stuff that can be a little bit useful for you. So the another thing that can be useful and very, very expensive as an operation is this go list. If I go ahead and run this one, uh, if I open this up into a full, now it says, hey, your dependency or your application, entire application is dependent on just this modules up here. Now, but we know that this is not 100% correct. Our application is dependent a little bit more on that. So for that, you can go ahead and say go list all 
and uh, just get ready for that this is going to dump everything so as of now these are all the application that are there all the packages in fact and uh, obviously my application is not dependent on all of them this actually list all the packages that are installed up here so there are some better flags uh, on this that we should obviously use that is one of them is go list uh, dash m all and now it actually gives that okay your module is dependent or your package is dependent on this package which is the name of my package obviously and also it is dependent on this gorilla mux so there can be a further down of this dependency list tree so you can go ahead and use that and not only that uh, maybe Gorilla Mux is further dependent on some dependencies. We can also find that out, but I would like to bring your attention to something uh, really interesting. I can go ahead and say that, let me just go ahead and run this one. So go list and I can just go ahead and say dash M and then dash versions. I'm not pretty sure that I need to put up a dash M, but we're going to figure it out in, in a minute versions. And then we have to say github.com slash gorilla slash mux uh, what this command is going to do that sometimes there are cases that you don't know which version of gorilla mux i want to use and you want to inquire that how many versions are available up there yes i need to use the dash m so it gives me that gorilla mux has publicly these versions available maybe for some reason the latest version is not working for you so you cannot just go ahead and say hey i'm a, i want to use 1.17 uh, that that's not the case you have to go into the web and figure it out on your own or you can use this command that hey the last downgraded version just before that was 1.7.4 that you can use so that is a uh, really nice and uh, it works really nice another one is uh, go mod tidy we have already seen that that it tidies up all the libraries that you are depending on that it also removes all those packages that you are not using it also try to bring in all the packages that maybe for some reason you have removed that okay uh, but again, remember everything that you type after this mod, maybe tidy or anything at all, these are all expensive operations. So whenever you do them in your CI, CD or anything, just make sure you keep an eye on that. Okay, uh, now a couple of interesting, more interesting command. And this mod package is all, all about interest. So there is a go mod Y and you can go ahead and uh, run this github.com slash gorilla slash mux. So you want to ask a question that why am I dependent on this package? Then it's going to go ahead and give you answer that, hey, uh, this is the module which is dependent on this particular package that you're using. Uh, and again, my screen is a little bit shorter, uh, but this is saying that, hey, this is the module which is dependent on this module. So that's what it's saying. Okay, you can go ahead and simply just put out in the entire graph of the dependencies, which is again, a really, really an expensive operation because it pulls up all the graph, come on, which can pull up all the graph of the dependencies. So this package is dependent on this package. If we would have more packages, then it would have list them and left and right. Uh, basically saying, hey, these are the packages are dependent on these are the packages. So a really simple one up here. Okay, so one last thing, which is not really, uh, I'm not a big fan of this, but hey, this exists, so I need to show you that as well. So go also give you this feature, go mod specially, edit. And this is useful in the case you want to edit this go mod file. I know this is a little bit weird uh, still for me to digest, but sometimes people prefer that I don't want to manually touch this file because it is too important. So I want to run everything through this go mod edit. And it has a couple of flags. Uh, the first one, the easiest one to remember is dash go, which can actually change your go version. So you can go ahead and say 1.16. And if you do this, uh, it just changes the version number up here. Uh, but I really don't get any good idea why I cannot just go up here and change it to seven. I know some people say this is too bad. You should always use this command. It just verifies that. Yes, I agree, but yeah, sometimes it's too much for me. So I, I don't go for that. Now, not only the go, there is also another option, which is a module, and this will allow you to change the module name. So you get the idea how this works, pretty basic one. Now, last thing that I would like to talk about is the vendor stuff, which is really, really useful in case you're trying or planning to push all of this onto a production grade. So Go also gives you an option. Remember, so far, anything that we are bringing in is not coming up into this folder. Everything is going onto that cache. And whenever we need that, it is coming up from the cache itself. But there might be a use case 
where maybe you are using Gorilla Mux, but the router is not exactly doing all the things that you want to do. So you want to bring in all the code, may, maybe you want to overwrite some of those modules, and then you want to publish it into production. So that is also the case. So in that case, what you can do is you can just go ahead and say go mod vendor. As soon as you run this, it gives you a folder which is vendor. Uh, consider this vendor folder is almost like uh, node modules. Now it is not bringing up everything from the web. It is going to just bring it at one time. You can package this entirely and everything now is going to be run through this vendor. Not directly, we have to pass on a flag, uh, but that's the whole idea. If I go ahead, it says module.txt. So it says, hey, I have only this uh, Gorilla Mux as of now. If you would have 10 more, it would bring 10 more. And inside the github.com, you can go ahead and see all the licenses and whole bunch of gibberish that is coming up from Gorilla Mux. So this is all for it. So again, go mod vendor is really useful, but you cannot actually go ahead and say, uh, hey, I'm gonna use a go run and main.go. If you do this, obviously this is going to just bring up everything from the web itself, it, if it has to. But if you pass on a flag up here, which says dash mod, not equals, dash mod equals vendor, then it's going to first look into the vendor folder. If there is one, it's going to bring up everything from here. And uh, I even haven't yet scratched the surface of what GoMod actually has to bring in. So you can see there is a versioning, GoMod Y, which we haven't yet discussed much in detail. There is a verify, vendor, tidy. So these are all the basic one that I have touched here. Uh, but as you can see, there is a GoMod init, graph edit, download, which we haven't talked about, check some databases. There's a whole lot. And obviously I cannot discuss all of them, but now you have a thorough basic and uh, quite a lot in-depth knowledge about why we have this go mod why we were talking about this uh, But remember before we end this video just remember one thing that the workspaces are almost gone from Golang if there is a legacy application uh, Probably it's a good time to update that because go is not going back into that system Go will move forward into the modules system and go mod is here and it's going to be there so if you are building up any new application, Go mod is the way how to bring up all the thing. And it is also not too much advice to use the Go vendor to just bring up everything using the Go mod or Go get. Uh, of course, if you need anything more or if I have missed anything, just let me know in the comment section. It would be great for the community as well. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.